Permaculture is about living lightly on the planet and making sure that we can sustain human activities for many generations to come in harmony with nature. Central to permaculture are three ethics. Earth care, caring for the living soil. People care, people's needs are met in compassionate and simple ways. And fair shares, taking what we need, sharing what we don't, and recognising limits. EcoWorks is Nottingham's first permaculture organisation and has been practising permaculture design for over 20 years creating sustainable human habitats by following patterns and relationships found in nature. The Permaculture Design course in Nottingham is supported by the Workers' Education Association and delivered as a weekend course over six months. The course provides students with the knowledge and tools to create productive spaces, culminating in the development of a design project which incorporates and demonstrates the learning from the course. This film will look at one of the projects developed in 2013 and we'll look at the processes that were followed by the design team. Many years ago I was interested in running small holding and um, I did the course because I, I was really interested in, in gardening and um, alternative life, lifestyles etc. I've got a big garden that was in a bit of a mess and um, I've always been interested in, I'm, I'm an ethical consumer and I've always been interested in growing your own and I just didn't know enough about it so I thought this is a really good opportunity to learn some new skills and maybe meet some people who think the way I do. I was interested in doing the permaculture course because I love plants and I'm a gardening obsessive and it just seemed really interesting. The site that the team identified was a piece of land next to an existing horticultural charity project in Shipley Country Park, Derbyshire. This is a green health enterprise. It's an environmental project, uh, mostly set up for growing organic vegetables and teaching horticulture to groups of young adults with learning difficulties. We're based at the back of Shipley Country Park. It's all council owned. We've got two polytunnels where we grow vegetables. We've got loads of raised beds outside. We've got an orchard, a tree nursery and a commemorative woodland. A piece of land has been used for grazing for about the last 10 years and it's adjacent to this piece of land. It's about 75 metres long by 15 metres wide on a hill and it's just not being used. We'd like to see the land used for a disabled access horticultural projects. We've had more and more young adults come in here in wheelchairs and they can't access the facility properly. So we'd like to put in some sort of pond and paths. It's somewhere where they could come with the wheelchairs, learn horticulture, an edible landscape with trees, uh, vegetables, hopefully perennial. Uh, some sort of sensory garden would be nice. At the moment it's just uh, meadow grass, uh, lots of daisies. The soil uh, is very clay around here, so it's, it's not that good the soil, but it can be worked on. It's northwest facing, uh, at the bottom is an old derelict barn, which the council has given us permission to use if we need to use it. The design process the team followed was survey, analysis, design, implementation, maintenance and monitoring, and evaluation. The first part of the survey process was to complete a client interview. This determined the vision for the project, the resources and the limitations. The team learnt how the facility will provide horticultural learning for wheelchair users. The landscape should be fully accessible and edible where possible. Water should be collected as there is no running water on site and the project should be phased as funding in the first year is limited. While the budget is limited, there is an existing plentiful supply of propagated fruit trees and shrubs, and labour will be provided by between 25 to 30 volunteers. The team use skills learnt on the course to map the terrain of the site, and understand the external influences that would affect the design. Soil was collected from the site and analysed as silty clay. As part of the research process, the team visited Phil Corbett of Cool Temperate. Phil discovered permaculture in the 1980s and was one of the first individuals in the UK to complete the permaculture design course. The team gathered specialist information about unusual perennial edibles. The team met and analysed the collected data. 
understanding it in relation to the needs and the requirements of the client and of the project. Basically, um, the design process uh, involved us um, bringing all our, our ideas, our individual ideas, to the table, sitting around and bouncing them off each other and coming up with a, a, a finished product that everybody was happy with. There was a lot of emphasis on uh, wheelchair access, which was a, a tricky thing to overcome, really, because a, a large amount of the site had to be kind of dedicated towards um, paths for wheelchair access. Doing the design was really eye-opening, actually. You don't realise how much you've learned. And, um, you know, we've been able to put a lot together and actually come out with a design that I just didn't think we would have been able to. We divided up the uh, research sort of based around what we thought the different elements of the design would be and I took the, the pond uh, looking at the kind of aquaculture and just went crazy with pond plants and carp and stuff. My, my specific area of research was actually working on the irrigation side of things and uh, drainage, how to deal with runoff water. Uh, we put some swales in um, to capture natural runoff um, but because on this project we had a lot of hard standing areas, uh, wide footpaths etc, we also had a lot of surface runoff so we used um, um, drainage um, connected to IBCs and then we used uh, hand pumps for extract extracting from the IBC into watering cans etc. When we put together the design um, we were basing it primarily around the use of wheelchair users so we wanted it to be an edible landscape, we wanted it to be an area where wheelchair users would be able to move freely and we wanted it to be an area where wheelchair users would be able to come in and learn about horticulture. Um, we've come up with a design that we think ticks all of those boxes and it's developed in such a way is that the design can be implemented over a phased schedule. The design for the site was based around a zigzag pathway, incorporating annual vegetable beds, foraging areas and sensory zones, all fully accessible by wheelchair users. The design incorporated concepts learnt on the permaculture design course, such as water retention methods, patterns, pond design and choice of plants. I think all of us on our team are really looking forward to seeing this uh, design that's just on paper at the moment actually, actually taking a, a phys physical form. This permaculture design course has really opened my eyes up to what permaculture is and um, it really sort of gels with lots of things in ways that I think anyway. I think in the future it would be great to do um, permaculture on a kind of enterprise level, you know, some kind of permaculture business, maybe a design practice. The next step for us, hopefully, is to actually implement the design. Um, it would be great to see actually the site being used by wheelchair users. Um, we'll get involved in hopefully in the implementation, the maintenance, we'll be able to monitor the site, evaluate it, and then we'll be able to tweak the design and make sure it's really fit for purpose. I'm very excited about the impending design and seeing it implemented, and uh, it'd be really good to see people with disabilities in wheelchairs to come and be able to access this, which they normally wouldn't be able to do.